don't ever open your mouth and say you can't do much here no you can you are made to make a difference in this world by your very presence by your very work by your gifts and talents that god has given to you you can make a big difference in this world and god is with you as you do it as you purpose to live for god god will honor everything that you put your hand to do God has changed now. He doesn't open any curtains anymore. Show anything anymore. He keeps everything secret to himself. No. Not many people are asking. No, not many people are seeking. Not many people are asking God to help them in their work so that they can succeed in their work and bring glory to God. Not many people are taking on the challenges when they are presented to him as an opportunity. Hello. Everybody is awfully silent today. They are not ready to take on. They are not ready to say by the grace of God I am going to try it. I am going to pray. I am going to go at it. I am going to give it a try. If God will help me I will do it for the glory of God. That approach is not there. Most people have adapted to another lifestyle now. The less work the more salary better. <laughs> you know. They say don't give all that work to me. You know. I don't know anything about that. One fellow said to me, that's not my calling. <laughs> Nothing, just some office work, you know. He says, that's not my calling. Anybody can do that work. But that's not my calling in life. I said, take a walk then. <laughs> this is not my calling to have you, you know. <laughs> here, is, here is a man who is an example of this. He takes on the challenge and he tells his friends, you pray and you help me. Let's pray. Let God reveal to us. And God does reveal to him. And at the end of the chapter 2, it goes to the king and uh, interprets the dream and everything. At the end of the chapter 2, you find uh, that great position has been given to him. Verse, verse 47 says, the king answered Daniel and said, truly your God is the God of gods, the Lord of kings. And a revealer of secrets, since you could reveal this secret, see? Then the king promoted Daniel and gave him many great gifts. And he made him the ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief administrator over all the wise men of Babylon. Also Daniel petitioned the king and he set Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Bab Babylon. But Daniel sat at the gate of the king. He was a consultant right with the king, right there. He was over all the wise men of the nation and his three assistants and friends have been made in charge of the whole realm of Babylon by his recommendation. 
and look at what the king says he says your god is the god of gods the lord of kings and a revealer of secrets brings glory to god the third chapter gets even more interesting that's the chapter where you see uh, shadrach meshach and abednego thrown into the uh, into fire third chapter begins like this nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its width 6 cubits that is about 60 cubits is about 90 feet height was 6 60 cubits and width 6 cubits 90 feet tall statue he makes he set it up in the plain of dura in the province of babylon now some kings don't have anything better to do so he sits up thinks about what can i do you know so here he hears about some guy who made a statue this big and 50 feet tall and 40 feet tall and all that it's over here and there and all these guys consultants you know these wise fools that are around him give him all the ideas about uh, you know how this fellow has this statue and that fellow has built this one and he says how can i build it 10 feet more i'll build one 60 feet more so he built one 60 feet high not only did he build it the story later on goes that he invited every every leader every official in all of his realm to come to the dedication of the statue and they all come to the dedication and there the announcement is made now i can see a grand scheme here see some guys are consul- some guys are working as consultants trying to work against uh, these guys daniel shadrach meshach and abednego they're always scheming to snare them and and trap them and and kill them somehow so they probably told the king let's build a big statue and that's call for a big dedication let everyone come and in the dedication these guys instigate the king to make the announcement saying that if anyone does not bow before this the statue as the music is played if you don't bow then you're finished you know you'll be thrown into fire and be killed and uh, certainly this was targeted for shadrach meshach and abednego these fellows in mind purposely tailor made law for them you know because who would not bow to it the king has made it certainly all the babylonians will be willing to bow to it you know a lot of babylonians will be willing to bow because their king has told them and i'm sure a lot of babylonians were like all the rest of the world you know they'll bow to anything you know if you just tell they don't care what they bow to they would have bowed anyway only people that would not bow are the people that have the 10 commandments that says you shall have no other gods you shall make no images their law specifically says that they can have no other gods and make no other images and worship them these people would not bow to any image that you made so it is tailor made to trap them and kill them and they make it and dedicate it and they announce it and said as the music is played everybody bow and these fellows didn't bow and they make they report to the king they say these three fellows are there shadrach meshach and abednego they are not respecting you they say the king's like that you know oh he doesn't respect me i built this 90 feet stuff and he doesn't respect me he didn't do that they said yes so they said bring them along throw them in the fire the king first asked them did you say that did you say that you will not do and uh, they say yeah we don't need to answer you regarding this they say really you know the answer our god is able to save us they said but even if he doesn't save us we will not be serving these statues that you have made they say and they are thrown into the fire and the fire is heated even seven times more than normally and the guys that threw them in got killed it was so hot and the guys that were thrown in survived it they looked in and these fellows are there alive and the lo and behold there was a fourth man right in the middle along with these three there was a fourth man who looked like the son of god himself he is the son of god jesus christ present with them he said i'll never leave you nor forsake you the one who has said it in the most dangerous point in their life at the most at the time when they were risking their whole life and they found themselves thrown in the fire 
yes he has given them the promise but now personally he comes there appears there before them and is there present with them in this most difficult times god understands that this is a tough thing to take so he comes and is there as the fourth man with them and the king is astonished he tells tells them to come out again they've learned a lesson that they can't kill these guys all these problems come in their work because of their position because of the work because of their success because of the knowledge and the wisdom and the expertise that these guys have because they are succeeding big time in their work this other group is oppressing them they're pulled out and again god of these people are shown to be wonderful true god and look at verse 26 nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke saying shadrach meshach and abednego servants of the most high god come out and come here so you can tell this guy has been listening to some co- consultants only <laughs> he knows better then shadrach meshach and abednego came from the midst of the fire not even their hair in their head was singed nor were their garments affected it says nor was the was the smell of fire on them then nebuchadnezzar spoke saying verse 28 blessed be the god of shadrach meshach and abednego who sent his angel and delivered his servant who trusted in him and they have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god see they knew what the law said they knew that these guys won't worship they knew that they will only follow their law and so on then he says therefore i make a decree that any people nation or, or language who speaks anything amiss against the god of shadrach meshach and abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made in ash heap because there is no other god who can deliver like this god amen completely the law changes everything changes total victory is gained when you read stories like this it just enables you to stand for god and take your stand for god and trust in god to do mighty things and great things for you many times you feel like small in a world in a big world that seems like everything is against you and set against you but when you read stories like this you realize that when god is on your side you are not a minority you are a majority amen, amen. all these fellows are trying very hard scheming up things wasting their time trying to do this and that just they probably built that 90 feet stuff just for these fellows you know to get them into trouble and all a waste waste of time and energy and money and everything next in chapter 4 also see in chapter 3 we saw how that they did not bow to idolatry and stood strong and took their position and 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 trusted in god to deliver them and chapter 4 is interesting also in chapter 4 nebuchadnezzar has a second dream and again he wants the dream to be interpreted and uh, again daniel is called again daniel ends up interpreting the dream of the king this this is a terrible dream now if you read the dream you wouldn't want to go before the king and tell him the interpretation king dreamed about a tree that was a big tree has a lot of nice leaves and fruit and it was there was food for all kinds of animals and everything there for all li- for all living beings there was food there it says and all of a sudden voice said loudly cut down this tree you know just leave the stump cut down everything all the leaves all the fruit everything cut it off and the king was bewildered he just didn't know what this whole dream meant and uh, daniel comes in and he gives the dream he says the tree you saw verse 20 chapter 4 verse 20 which grew and became strong whose heights reached to the heavens and which could be seen by all the earth whose leaves were lovely and its fruit abundant in which was food for all under which the beasts of the field dwelt and in whose branches the birds of the heaven had their home it is you o king that tree is you he says whoever uh, who have grown and became become strong for your greatness has grown and reaches to the heavens and your dominion to the ends of the earth 
And in as much as the king saw a watcher, a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, chop down the tree and destroy it, but leave its stump and roots in the earth, bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field, let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let him graze with the beasts of the field till seven times pass over. And this is the interpretation, O king. Look at the interpretation. You wouldn't want to stand there and say this to the king. Look at the interpretation, he says. And this is the decree of the Most High God, which has come upon my Lord, the king. They shall drive you from men. Your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. And they shall make you eat grass like oxen. They shall wet, wet you with the dew of heaven. And seven times shall pass over you till you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. Inasmuch as they gave the command to leave the stump and roots of the tree, your kingdom shall be assured to you after you come to know that heaven rules. He says, you have sinned and you need to learn a lesson. You're going to be cut down to size just like the tree is cut down. Your kingdom is going to be cut down. You're going to be dethroned literally. You're going to lose your throne and be living among the animals and eat grass like the cow. He's telling the king. That's what God is telling me. Until seven times are passed, until you begin to learn that heaven only rules, God only placed you there as a king. And then verse 27 is the most solemn words. Look how he speaks the truth in love. The, I don't think these are very easy things to say to a king in those days because they'll cut your head off for everything, you know. And look at him. He says, therefore, O king, let my advice be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by being righteous and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps there may be a lengthening of your prosperity. He says, King, I hope you have a change of mind. You repent, you change. Please accept my advice, he says. What is the advice? Break off your sins by being righteous. Do righteousness. Stop sinning. And your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Stop being a very mean, bad man. Show mercy to the poor, he says. Perhaps there may be a lengthening of your prosperity. Now, we've seen all the wonderful things that God did for Daniel as he interprets the dream, gives the dream and the interpretation and so on. We've seen already. And here he gives the interpretation. But look at the boldness that God gives to speak to this king in this way. And speak the truth in love. In this world, that is very needed for Christians. As we live in this world and work in this world, we need to learn the art of speaking the truth in love. Amen? We're not here to condemn people. We're not here to just throw curses on people. We are not here to say, oh, you're going to eat grass like a cow and live among the animals. And no, no, no. Speaking the truth in love. He's really concerned about the king and his welfare. Even though he's living in a foreign land, he's living and serving the oppressor. The king was taking him as captive. Even though he's a slave in that land, serving the oppressor. He realizes that this king has been good to him in some ways. And uh, that there can be a change of heart. And he's full of compassion for the king and for the country. He says, please repent. Stop being bad. Do good to the poor. Stop sinning like this. Do righteousness so that there will be a lengthening of your prosperity so that you may be well for a long time more, he says. He is truly concerned about the king and his welfare. No matter how much they did against him, is concerned about the king and his welfare. Then finally we come to chapter 6. You have the story of Daniel being thrown into the lion's den. Even that thing was framed just to get Daniel into trouble. Now this guy has a habit of praying and he prays three times a day. Facing Jerusalem he prays. So these guys take notice of that and they can't find any mistake in his work. They can't find anything wrong. They can't find any accusation like he took money from this person or, you know, or this and that. Nothing like that. He can't, he's a man of integrity. He's a faithful guy. 
He's a good guy. And he did his work very well. You can't find any fault in it. So they're looking and looking and could not find fault with it. Have you noticed the only place where they could find some way to frame him is concerning his religious beliefs yeah. with these people. For Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they targeted them by building a statue and making them to bow before it. Now for Daniel, they couldn't find any fault with him. Only fault they can find is that he's worshipping some other god. He's praying to some other god. That's a big mistake in that, in that place, you know. How can you pray to some other god? So they told the king, let's time for another game now, you know, for them. Let's uh, come up with another law, they said, for 30 days. Just for 30 days. We will have a law that says no man can ever pray to another god or another man, make any kind of petition to any other god or any other man other than the king himself. For 30 days only. Because they know in 30 days they can surely nail him. For some people, you can have it for even 90 days, you will never catch them making that mistake of praying, you know. For this guy, they said, 30 days, we'll find him praying. We'll bring him. So they make the law just for 30 days. Nobody can pray to any other God, any other man. Only to the king they can pray. But that didn't stop Daniel from praying. This law didn't stop him from praying. He went into his room. He didn't want any trouble. He went into his room as usual and he started praying. He was not saying, hey, I'm praying. I'm putting in the newspaper advertisement today. No, no, no. He didn't want any trouble. He went into his room and prayed. He faced Jerusalem and he started praying. Three times a day he prayed and they found him praying. They must be hanging around there, you know, to watch whether he's praying or not. He went into the upper room. Somehow they spied on him and saw that he was praying. They reported to the king, this man is not respecting you. Your law is praying. We got to throw him in the lion's den as the king has decreed. So when the king says something, he cannot take it back. So he says, okay. And the king doesn't want to because he knows how great a guy Daniel is. He feels bad for it, but they throw him. And the whole night after they throw him in the lion's den, the king is fasting and losing sleep as if he is in the lion's den, you know. And Daniel is sleeping and having a good time. The next morning, the king meets him and says, what happened to you? He says, no, nothing, no problem. God has tied the lion's mouths, he says. How many of you know, even today, God is in the business of tying up lion's mouths? <laughs> Everything that is set against you to swallow you, to destroy you, and to do away with you, the Lord is in the business of tying its mouth, you know. God is on our side. You got to live with that consciousness. That's what I like about these four people because they believe that God is there for them, that they are not alone. They are not just a little minority somewhere that they don't need to fear. When it comes down to it, they can stand for the laws of God, stand for the principles that God has given to them and the values that God has given to them and live by God's word and obey God. They want to serve the country. They want to be good to the They're serving the country. They're contributing tremendously to the country with their gifts and abilities and talents. They're framed time and again. Again and again they're targeted and framed and brought into trouble. But every time God is with them. And I say to you today and to me and to everyone that is here, and listening to me far, from faraway lands and far, faraway places, that God is with you and with, you, with me, just like he was with Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Our world may be in some way similar, though not that bad. God is with us. Our God has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and for ever. So don't ever open your mouth and say, you know, I am afraid. Don't ever open your mouth and say, you can't do much here. No, you can. You are made to make a difference in this world by your very presence, by your very work, by your gifts and talents that God has given to you. You can make a big difference in this world. And God is with you as you do it, as you purpose to live for God. God will honor everything that you put your hand to do. Amen. Clap our hands. Check.
sacrifice praise with a song I will lay the soul to Lord blessed be your 